All right, guys, welcome back to this tutorial series on making a ball bouncing Maya with a little bit of squash and stretchiness for good measure. So in the last step, we got as far as this motion that we've got here, which is just making the ball bounce up and down, but it's not convincing at all. It kind of looks like a yo-yo, uh, which is not what we're going for. So we're going to sort that out. So making sure you've got the right controller selected, which is the one that we set the keyframes on. So it's that little chappy there. You'll know if it's the right one because you'll get all the red ticks on your timeline. And once you've got that, we're going to go into um, Windows, Animation Editors, and Graph Editor. And you'll be greeted with something that looks like this. I'm going to press A on my keyboard just to make this kind of fill the screen. Um, and this is the animation that we've got. Now what we need to do is make this line look more like a bouncing ball. As soon as this line looks like a bouncing ball, the ball we've animated will look like a bouncing ball. So what we've got here is we can see that at the top of each of these curves, it's kind of doing what we want in that it's rounding. But the problem is it's rounding at the bottom as well, which is not how movement works. So we need to sort that out first of all. We're going to do the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag to get a selection. And I just want all those keys along the bottom. And you can see I've got them now. They've gone yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the tangent, which is the type of curve that's used to interpolate between each of the keyframes. At the moment, it's just on whichever is default. But I'm going to use this one, which is linear, which means straight line. So if I click on this, all the ones at the bottom go straight, which is exactly what we're looking for. Because that's how a ball works. It hits the ground and then it comes straight back up. So straight away, the ball will look better. If you want to test it, it will already look better, but we're going to further improve on this to uh, make it look even more better. So I'm going to start on this first point here. And what you can do with these points is you can um, change them. So if I was to, so I've clicked on this one. If I now click on this side of it and with my middle mouse button, click and drag, you can see that I can have an impact on um, how these curves are working. The problem is that they're stuck together. So if I put a bit of a slope on this first curve, it's having kind of an adverse effect on the other side of it, which I don't want. So the first thing you should do is select your keyframe. And then this little chappy up here is called break tangent. And that means that one side of the curve will be separate to the other side. And when you move one, you won't cock up the other. So I'm going to break the tangents on that. I'm going to click this side of my curve and I'm just going to change it so that now the ball hangs in the air for a bit longer. It's quite a cartoony exaggerated ball bounce, but that's what we're going for. And then I'm going to do that on the other side. So I select that one and I'm just going to bend this out just to get the ball to hang in the air for a little bit longer. And now I'm going to repeat this along all of the points at the bottom until I get a nice curve. Okay, so there we go. Uh, you might have noticed that I didn't bother doing the two at the end. That's because the curves aren't really big enough to need that doing. But you can see these arches on um, on each of the bouncers are now uh, much nicer. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep the, the drop-off rate a little bit more consistent. So here, they're not very consistent. They're kind of a bit all over the place. So I'm going to select this one here, and I'm going to hold Shift on my keyboard... And then I'm going to middle mouse click. I'm just going to pull that point down a bit. Uh, and that's just going to necessitate a little bit more messing around with the curves. Because now they don't quite work in the way I want them to. So I'll just change that. Uh, I'm going to bring this one down a touch as well. And then I think I'm happy. Okay. So now at this stage we're just going to test that out. So if we play that, you can see that the ball is much more convincing. It looks like it weighs something, it hangs in the air, it pops straight back up from the ground, making it look like it's got a bit of bounciness to it. So that is exactly perfect, spot on what we want for this point of the animation. 
So in the next video, we're going to add a bit of squash and stretch to this bad boy. So you should look forward to that. That's when it gets really magical. And then beyond that, we need to get it moving from uh, left to right in this case. I'm uploading a new video in this series each week, so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss any steps. If you've got any questions, just drop a comment below and I'll help you out if I can. And I'll see you in the next one.